Three years ago, uh, I came in in a special election. And in that very first week, General Motors announced the closure of the GM Detroit Hamtramck or Pole Town plant. And it was the scariest moment of a young elected official because I knew I didn't know enough to take care of my residents. So I called former Mayor Archer, who had always been a mentor, and he said, the first thing you need to do is call Senator Levin. Because Carl Levin helped build that plan in the 80s. I called him and he said, the first thing you must do is never accept that this plan is going to close. And I said, but they said, he said, you never accept this plan is going to close. You need to start getting on the horn. You need to get meetings. You need to organize. And you need to start working for the next project. The next product line, what's going to be built there? And so in this very back room, and I don't think pointing is a prop, but uh, <clears throat> I called uh, the TED director, now the majority leader's chief of staff, and it was the first conversation we ever had. And I said, hey, I need to talk to you today about how we're going to keep this plan open. And we're meeting. We called General Motors, got their lobbyists, got their folks in and said, hey, we need to be talking about this, MEDC, the local community. And we met weekly until we got an answer, until they were able to announce that the General Motors plant, the Pole Town plant, was going to be the new home of an all-electric Hummer, right? And then just three weeks ago, I got to stand there with President Biden, the congressional delegation, uh, GM C CEO Mary Barr, and Ray Curry, the president of the UAW, as they talked about a historic investment in EVs that was going to start in my district the home of the auto industry, right? The original Model T plant is just a couple miles from my home. Chrysler's world headquarters was in that same location for just over, you know, three centuries, you know, almost 30 years ago it moved, right? Like these are the kind of things that Detroit, that Hamtramck, that Highland Park, that Michigan had. You know, I mean, we're talking about a community where a third of every car produced in the world was at the beginning, right? And then 30 years ago, a third of every car produced in the U.S. was made in Michigan. Today, it's 17 percent. So we've lost almost half of our market share in just my lifetime, in just my lifetime. And that's not talking about all the design jobs, all the innovation, all of those things that also used to be housed right there in Hamtramck, right there in Highland Park, right there in Detroit, the Argonaut building, which is where so many General Motors products were built and designed the first wind tunnels as we started talking about aerodynamics. The next phase of our state is going to be an in innovation. And we know that the tools that we are providing the state with in MEDC are going to ensure that Michigan is not just where auto cars are built, not just where we think about those things, but where the entire process is created for EVs. And the key piece among those is batteries, right? It's batteries, it's semiconductors, it's electricity. That's where we're moving, and that is going to be the key to this state and our continued investment. So as you think about today's vote, I hope that you are all incredibly excited of what will be the first of many opportunities to recruit and retain jobs to Michigan because we are not competing with Indiana or Ohio. We're not competing with Mexico or you know, the South. We are competing with the entire world to make sure that batteries are produced here, that semiconductors are produced here, that when we're talking about chips, they're made in your district, they're made in my district, and they're designed by our children in our communities paying tax dollars to this state. For years, we talked about American muscle. But what we're really thinking about now is American innovation happening in our community. And that's what these incentives are about. And so I'm excited.